you, both of you are going to be overflooded with joy. Amen. And by the time you leave, you're going to be praying for one another, yes. blessing one another. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> See, it means to, abounding means to excel. Excel in your faith. Excel in your establishment. In your roots. In your building up. In Christ. So. He says. With Thanksgiving. It means. Oh and part of this definition is interesting. And it has to do with. Uh, joyful about you ministries. Um, conference coming up. November 20th. But. The word abounding also means, it means to be the better. Don't they have the become a better you? <laughs> See, it means to be the better. This is in the Greek language. To have enough and to spare of the grace of God in your life and the glory of God. To increase, to exceed Above and beyond, glory to God. All right, let's go back now to, to Philippians. All right. So, let's look at this back in Philippians here. It says, so we read that so I may apprehend that which I am apprehended for. See, I follow after, I pursue. Follow after means to press forward. I press forward. I pursue. I follow. If after that, I, I mean, if that I may apprehend that which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Amen. To apprehend. Yes. See, first of all, he apprehended us. He saved us. Yes. Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And ordained you. <coughs> that you would bring forth much fruit. Jesus sought he came to seek and to save that which was lost. So he apprehended your heart. Yes, He got a hold of you. He put that hook in you. Yes, Lord. He was the fisherman of your soul. Yes, Lord. See, Jesus told the disciples, I'll make you fishers of men. He reached out with his fishing pole and and, and, and you caught the bait. Amen. <laughs> you heard the gospel and you believed and he got a hold of you. Now, we want to get a hold. We want to catch the reason why he got a hold of us. He didn't just get a hold of you just to save you, wash you from your sins, and leave you in that stage. Now there's a whole process ahead, which, which all of us have been on. So it says that which I may, that I may apprehend, that I may lay hold of, that I may obtain and find, that I may even comprehend it. You know, the Word of God says, that God would grant you by his spirit to be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth mm. and the length and yes. the depth and the height yes. there's a length there's a breadth there's a depth and there's a height and that you may know the love So he says, this is the reason why Jesus apprehended us. He says, now, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Mm. See, even Paul said, now, 
I don't say that I've arrived at that final place yet. Jesus. He said, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Yes, 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 yes. We forget the things that are behind. We reach forth. We're, we're always reaching forth unto those things that are before. There's also a scripture in 1 Corinthians, I think, chapter 15, that says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. See, we're about to abound in the work of the Lord next week when we hit the north side. Amen? Amen. Now, we got to hit there Saturday so we can plow the ground a little bit. <laughs> Amen? Those of us who are going to go and hit the streets Saturday right there. But we're abounding. We're reaching forth under those things that are before. So he says, I forget the things that are, that are behind. He says, and I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark or the, um, the goal. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We press towards something that's even in the heavenly realm. We're pressing, it's the high, it's the heavenly calling. We're pressing towards that mark because one day we're going to be able to stand face to face with our Father. One day, Jesus is going to be standing there with you before the Father. And one day, you and Jesus are going to be standing there, but you all will be beaming with glory together. Because the Bible says, see, when we see him as he is, we shall be like him. He's called us unto his kingdom and glory. And one day you and the Father are just going to just blend together. You, the Father, and Jesus are just going to be able to blend together in one. See, the Father, uh, Jesus said, Father, that they may be one in us as I am in you, as I'm one with you. Me and you, you and us. I and them. And that's going to be a reality. We're going to be beaming with Jesus from head to toe in perfection. In total perfection. But we press towards that mark right now. As we looked at the other day, I forgot what day it was, but as we as we, we go from glory to glory, amen? amen. As we behold him, in a, as in a mirror, the reflection from Jesus changes us from glory to glory. So it's a transforming change going on daily. Amen. Going on constantly. Going on as we look to Jesus. Every time you come to church, more glory is reflecting on you and you're being changed. Every time you open that Bible, glory yes. is, is, yes. Is, is, is changing you. The glory of Jesus is changing you. Every time you pray, and you yes. look up to heaven, the glory from the face of Jesus is changing you. The glory from the face of your Father is changing you to become more and more like him. God says, receive that. I saw God just revolutionize someone's prayer and Bible reading life right there. Next time you go to pray, next time you go and read the Bible, I saw it's going to come alive, glory to God. My God, you're going to... You're going to think about that word. You're going to say, wait a minute, I can't wait. Where's my Bible? <laughs> you know, instead of you getting ready and dragging and saying, oh, yeah, I got to get my devotions in. You know, you sit down. No, no, it's not going to be like that. <laughs> you're going to be like, where's my Bible? And you can't wait to open that up. Yes. Start drinking and start eating. Yes, Lord. God prepares a table before you. Yes, Lord. Thank my God. You begin to eat and drink, and then you just fall on your knees. You begin to pray. You begin to cry out, and glory just sweeps over you. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Yes. 
My God, he's raising up some oh. people of Jesus in this Thank place. Oh, my God. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Now, Paul said he, he forgets those things that are behind. What was he talking about? Let's see what he was talking about in verse 3. This is a very important thing here for us to move forward. Now, Paul was saying, for we are the circumcision, talking about the Jews, but now in the spiritual way, which worship God in the spirit. And rejoice in Christ Jesus. And have no confidence in the flesh. Amen. See that? Yes. None. No confidence. No reliance. No trust in the flesh. Now what is he talking about? He said, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. Huh. He was saying it just he said, if any man, if any other man think that he have whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. In other words, he's saying, okay, you know, I can have confidence in the flesh if I wanted to. Amen. Amen. If you all think that you have something that you can bring to the table that you did in the flesh, Amen. he said that I got much more than I got much more than all y'all. Amen. <laughs> He said, circumcise the eighth day. Mm -hmm. Just like the law said we should. Yes. Not on the ninth day. I was circumcised right on the eighth day. You know, like he was he was playing with them because the the Jews were so hung up on on works. pinpointing works of the law yes. and this and that yes. and squabbling over it. Man, if it yes. wasn't the eighth day, they'd probably you know, they'd probably have to pay a fee to the to the, you know, um, Synagogue or something. You know? yeah. So he said, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of no other than Benjamin. Mm. Hey. Well, one of the sons that Jacob really loved. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Amen. <laughs> and Hebrew of Hebrews, of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Mm. See, Paul was a Pharisee. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Concerning zeal. Mm. Even persecuting the church. Yes, yes. Touching the righteousness which of the uh, which, which <coughs> the law of the land. Paul is basically saying, I followed that law so good, you know, even though we know he said, you know, that how the law was made just to show our sin. But he's saying, nobody can find no fault with me, you know, it's concerning the law. He was tiptoeing on that law. <laughs> But what things were gained to me, all that reputation, all that position that he attained to in Israel, of the stock of Israel, and, and all that recognition as a Pharisee and as a leader of the Pharisees, even persecuting the church, which, which they thought were against God, he said, those things are counted loss for Christ. I count it loss. Loss means, I'm going to pull this one up. It means through the idea of violence. You see it on the screen there. Through the idea of violence, I count it detriment or damage. Loss. In other words, all what I was, whatever I attained before I met Jesus, Through the idea of violence, you just release it all. You just come it as nothing before God, before Jesus. See, now, this, this doesn't mean that if God been, you know, if God blessed you before you knew him with certain talents and gifts in certain ways, it doesn't mean he's not going to use those. But, what it means is when you come to Jesus, anything you you obtained on yourself, or you thought you did it on your own anyway, but anything that that you accomplished or whatever, education wise, reputation wise, anything you 
just, whatever it is, you just release it. And you say, Lord, I count it lost. I count this damage. I count my life pretty much as detriment. Detriment. He says, yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. I count all things but loss for the supreme knowledge of Christ Jesus. So whatever we did Whatever place we attain to, we're willing to count it as nothing so we can attain the knowledge of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Paul was like one of the people like you can meet in one of the universities or something. Or, you know, even, even some of these religious people that are highly educated and that you know they come out with these big robes and stuff and they feel like they're the great whatever they call them, you know, prelates or reverends or whatever. And willing to say, you know what, whatever I attain in the natural, you could have got five doctorate degrees in divinity, for example. And, and you can just be going through the motions. You know, you can get a job with a doctor of divinity as a chaplain or something, you know. You might be getting paid for that, for that doctor's degree, you know, working in a hospital or, or whatever. But when compared to knowing Jesus, he said, I count it lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. See, the excellency of knowing Jesus. Look at this word excellency. It means to excel. It means superiority for the superiority of the knowledge of Jesus my Lord it means better knowledge higher and supreme see you trade whatever you did now like I said if you've attained degrees and different things once you lay it down to Jesus and you say, Lord, it's nothing compared to knowing you. Amen. Amen. First of all, you get the benefit of moving into a higher, supreme oh, level Jesus. of oh. knowledge, of knowing yeah. Jesus. To the point where you forget about anything. See, it doesn't matter to you. See, you, you got to lose your life to find it. Yes. Like I said, it doesn't mean God won't use those experiences mm. again. See, like, for example, with Paul, there's a man, uh, Richard Buck, a long time ago. God caught him up into heaven. He was a pastor. And he wrote a book about how the angels would visit him and when he, when he saw God. And God told him, he said, he said, I chose Paul and I allowed him to become highly educated in the law. So he could write most of the New Testament in a in a way that would be you know very doctrinally sound you know Paul Paul wrote you know Paul wrote the New Testament under under a heavy anointing but he had extreme knowledge of the law and of the prophets yes. you know read read through his books and God God told this guy that he said he said I used Paul's past and allowed him allowed him to become highly educated in in you know scripture, I'm you know being a Pharisee and everything, knowing that I would save him and then use him to write so much that that would bless all Jesus. the world. Jesus, 
So it doesn't mean God's not going to use that education. But when you come to Jesus, yes. you compare what you got compared to knowing Jesus. And you got to be willing. See, because knowing Jesus, you're going to find out that he will contradict a lot of what you've learned in your past. Whether